sent away for fear of his power. We are playing part two of Jace Bellerin's campaign. This is Lee with untapped potential. Let's jump right into it. A sphinx named Alhammerit arrives, having heard about the incident. He's a mind mage and a political arbiter. You leave your home to train with Alhammerit, hoping that he can help you control your abilities. He frequently tests your progress. Uh, he does it frequently because this was a tough fight. There's a distinct strategy to it though that turns it into nothing. And we're gonna go through that right now. So I went into this as blind as I could. I've tried to avoid reading about any of these fights and I'm not gonna do this one in character because I wanna explain to you where everything went wrong. Uh, first, everything went wrong when I kept a five land hand and proceeded to draw nothing but islands. And I don't think I'm being uh, over the top there. I literally don't think I drew anything but islands this entire game. And we're gonna see why that's a problem in a minute. Now Hammerit is running a ton of defenders. So you remember how I said back in part one how blue is not that great on the beatdown, tends to be more of a support sort of role where other colors do the heavy hitting? It's great at support? Well, it's all we've got. And at the moment our opponent just keeps vomiting out defenders and all our little guys will get chewed apart if we try to attack through them. We can't get through them anyway, so there's no point. And again, I'm drawing nothing but land. I go ahead and uh, counterspell this Riddle Keeper here, probably because I misread it. I think I thought it did it when it, it attacked me as opposed to the other way around. So I waste my valuable counterspell on something that really wasn't much of a threat at all. Okay, I take it back. I finally did draw something and I go ahead and play it. It will let us draw cards. It's a good mana sink because God knows we have plenty of that. And here's what I should have countered. Sphinx's Tutelage. Now granted, letting it resolve was a story win, a flavor win, because well, that's what the Sphinx is doing, he's tutelaging us. Tutelaging is now a verb. But basically, at the beginning of each of my turn, every time he draws, we have to exile the top two cards, of or just mill the top two cards of our library, and if they share a color, we have to repeat the process until we don't. Since everything we have is blue except for our lands, we will continue to have everything we do Every time he draws, we will lose multiple cards. We lost six that turn because, you know, I've been drawing all the islands. Two more, four more. We lost six more that turn as he drew his cards and he now has two copies out. And here we go again. He drew another card using the activated ability. We only have nine cards left in our deck already. And we're now, we're having to desperately dig for a solution. We pay our mana twice and draw two more islands. Go figure. And unfortunately, our opponent here mills us down to zero. And if anybody who played Magic knows, you all know what happens if you have to be draw at the beginning of your turn and don't have any any cards left. Yep, it's a loss. All right, but we know what we have to do now. Let's see if things go a little better in game two now that we have a battle plan. Do you remember that card we used on the bullies in part one? The part that shuffled our, li our graveyard back into our library and then made our opponent discard the same number? Remember how our opponent just completely wiped our entire mind here? Why don't we turn that back around? Now we don't get it in our opening hand and I perhaps should have mulliganed here, but we do however have some solid creatures as well as the Separatist Void Mage for tempo, meaning that we can control the pace of this game and their Psychic Spiral. Okay, now all we have to do is get up to the right number of lands and keep ourselves alive long enough to turn the tables on our hammer it and see if the master can become Oh no, the apprentice can become the master, the master become, uh, I guess still the master. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just start playing creatures for tempo here, and he is doing just like he did last game, he's running out the defenders. And multiple walls of air, which do have a little raw offensive power to hit us back with, is going to cause problems for us. But nevertheless, we can just keep running out small creatures in order to keep the board clogged up, and they're going to be important later. Okay, this is the part where I'm going to step back into character. So Hammer had pressed me back against the wall and he continued to play more and more spells and once again, I couldn't see a way through. I decided to try to return it to his hand, buy myself some time, buy myself a way to think of a solution. And I guess it worked for the getting on with, but I still couldn't attack. I couldn't overwhelm the Sphinx's powerful mind. And then he plays more creatures, powerful flying creatures. Again, I'm not good at dealing with those. Fortunately though, I do at least have one of my own I can block with. But every time I damage his creature, he exiles cards off the top of my library. What can I do about this? I decide to block, keep my, keep my body intact, even as he assaults my mind. And there's the Oculus again. It's at this point though that I begin to have an idea. Sphinx is trying to wipe my mind. What if I turn it against him and overwhelm his defenses? I go ahead and return that Sphinx to his hand. 
I gotta do this on my terms. Every time I attack now, I will lose the top two cards in my library, so I attack with as many creatures as I can. I need to load up the graveyard, and I need to do it fast before the Sphinx realizes what I'm up to. And so far, he doesn't seem to have realized it. He runs his card back out again. I've got 20 cards left in my library. Let's see how fast I can work my way through them. I draw myself an extra card here, an island. This will be good. I'll need as much mana on offer as I can to keep the Sphinx from stopping my plans. My opponent double blocks me here, costing me my defender, but I do more damage to my opponent, milling myself for more cards. Only 13 left in the library, and I'll hammer it doesn't seem to realize what I'm up to. He gets in a good hit on me here, but that's alright. And there's Sphinx's tutelage. Exactly what I needed. And he yet plays yet another defender, and this one I decide to counterspell. I need to load up my graveyard, and the best way to do that is with my counterspells. I draw another card, I'm down to 11 in the deck, and I still got Psychic Spiral, but don't have the mana to cast it this turn. That's okay, my opponent mills me here, he doesn't get too many, and he hits me again. I've got 8 cards left in the library, and he is starting to run out of resources. He's using Telling Time to try to dig for answers, and here's another one, but this time we're not, we're not gonna let him do that with counterspelling him. Well, we got him right where we want him now, we play another land. Thrilled Oculus will take the last eight cards if we attack with everybody we have. So we do. Our entire library is in the graveyard now, and even though our opponent blocked to kill some of our creatures, it does not matter. Our opponent tries to clash and wills us, but we've had so much time to build up mana that we pay for it. His counterspell fails. We put our entire graveyard back in our library, and he puts his entire library in the graveyard. And with that, we have bested Master Al Hammerit. See? Told you that one would be fun. So basically, our opponent milled us, and in a single flip, we turned it around and won the match. Alright guys, this has been Lee with Untapped Potential. We'll be doing part three early next week. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.